press on. Yeah, now they're starting. They're start, they, they, yeah, it's just starting now. Okay. Uh, I think we're good to go, um, Misha. Then just to, uh, let me let me let me let me introduce you know and 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 thank you actually for accepting to to present uh, this this tutorial. Yeah, Misha Misha Cherkov, uh, and uh, uh, you can probably say a couple of words about uh, about yourself, Misha, and uh, you know, what you've done in, in the last few years and how you you got involved uh, these kind of topics. And then please uh, go for about forty five minutes. Thanks. Okay, okay, Pierluigi. Thank you. So I hope you can hear me well. Yeah, so I'm Misha Chertkov. I'm at uh, University of Arizona Tucson. I'm running Applied Mass program here. Uh, I used to work at Los Alamos and I'm also collaborating uh, and participating in a part of a school TF, which is a uh, school in Moscow. And I'll uh, just one slide about my program and uh, you can check, uh, check online. So there are uh, all those uh, links. And yes, of course, we are looking for good students. Uh, and uh, it is applied mass, so, uh, uh, broad. Uh, and among topics, of course, we have energy systems. And that's what I'll be talking about. Uh, so I'll start with some uh, pre thoughts. Uh, well, uh, obviously, a majority of you are power engineers, but there is a life beyond uh, power systems and energy systems. Uh, well, uh, many formulations, uh, the legacy need to be challenged. Uh, formulations mean not only optimization, but here emphasize that. Uh, there are many algorithms and we live in a, in a, in a time and world of uh, remarkable things happening on that front. We need to, uh, to remember use all of that. And uh, it's not only about, uh, in this case, gas system or more generally general energy systems. It's of course about uh, accounting for underlying physics, dynamics, statistics, all of that should be integrated. So basically be ready. Uh, and that's probably was motto of today, um, go out of your comfort zone. Uh, well, uh, so power system uh, was uh, undergoing revolution, we know that. Uh, but other uh, energy systems, as again, I, I'm sure you heard already quite a number of thoughts on that today, uh, they are uh, behind, but not by much. So there are revolutionary changes in gas and heat, and uh, especially in gas. Uh, and from a point of view of power engineer, it's actually quite astonishing. So you'll see some examples. Uh, and uh, we're also going towards smart, uh, more general energy systems, which is a combination of those uh, three uh, major energy infrastructures, and I'll touch on that also uh, a bit. So now maybe a uh, more stunning thing is if you look at, uh, and that's already quite a while, right? 2012, so I'm, I'm talking about uh, this uh, California generation shares uh, uh, chart. Uh, so you see in 2012, gas takes 60% of generation. And uh, remember that 20 years before that, it was basically zero. So uh, growth is stunning uh, and uh, we, uh, we basically need to deal with that. Uh, I'll not be talking about district heating. I'll be happy to do it. And actually you, you've heard already quite a number of talks. So that's another subject of great interest to me. Uh, there are a number of countries, especially in Europe who are certainly ahead of years. And uh, uh, that's one, one subject of interest here as well. Uh, so now, uh, maybe concluding this very general high level uh, kind of pitch, uh, you need to be systematic and study any of those new systems. Uh, new for you if you're going uh, coming from power system or maybe from uh, some other field. So you need to model it. Uh, in many cases, models uh, have a lot of uncertainty. You need to uh, solve inverse problem and machine learning data analytics, that's what what it helps. And then uh, those models, uh, dynamic or static, need to be plugged in optimization control. Various uh, versions of those uh, are significant, accounting for uncertainty, etc. And then, of course, we want to plan it. So it's really uh, difficult. It's not easy. And uh, uh, coming up with good formulation and uh, good uh, mass and uh, mass sound and physics alone methods, that's, that's what we have to. So now uh, in the remaining whatever 40 minutes, 
I'll be talking uh, about specifically about gas system. I'll, in the end, if time permits, we'll tell you about uh, joint uh, gas and power optimization. So I have a course which is online uh, on uh, broader subjects on all the energy systems. If you're interested, check. Okay, so now uh, natural gas systems, uh, and I'll start uh, basically telling you about those uh, models uh, and uh, what's the, what those models are about. Uh, and uh, well, uh, Pierre Luigi asked me to tell you uh, about my path into this subject. It actually started relatively recently. Uh, so it was uh, 2000, maybe 11, 12. And I've been in New Mexico and winter uh, was a severe and we experienced very significant gas shortage. And uh, I was doing power system uh, quite a lot uh, by then already. And uh, it actually had immediate and tremendous effect. And few years later, it was this uh, polar vortex effect, uh, mainly in uh, uh, east coast of US, uh, where a uh, majority of uh, power system ISO got really scared because they don't have, uh, they depend uh, on gas in a significant way. And uh, then they discovered, and it was always kind of resource which was uh, plenty of, and now they discover that it's actually not. Because for gas system operators, uh, prime users, uh, their uh, city gates, well, because you need to hit and uh, not let people die, uh, that, that's cold. Uh, so now, uh, and very significant interest uh, which uh, I had in that is that uh, here it's clearly a system is dynamic and power system we used to uh, quite a lot of static approximation here effect, which is a line pack dynamic effect. I'll tell you more about that. You probably already heard about it today, makes a big difference. And that's motivationally what has happened. So now if you really want to grasp what uh, what this gas flows versus power flows are about. Let's depict it in this uh, cartoon. So you basically need to apply pressure. So pressure is a little bit like a uh, voltage. So uh, difference of pressure, like difference of voltage drives electric current, difference of pressure drives a flow. And flow is really mass flow of gas. So you push gas through and there is a friction and you need to overcome it. And that's why I apply, you apply pressure. So now um, modeling wise, of course, you need to make some assumptions and uh, you can back up those assumptions and make it more general. But for now, that's what our equations which I'll show you will be within these assumptions which are on the screen. So very briefly, uh, for single pipe, and that's what I'll start, uh, you assume that it's not tilted. So basically it's uh, not going into mountains and going down. So it's on a flat. Uh, you can account for gravity. So it's a constant temperature, which is not necessarily always the case. It changes from day to night. And of course, also from flats to mountains. It's ideal gas, so that's pretty accurate. Uh, so ideal gas means that pressure and density. Uh, so it's basically basics of gas dynamics are in proportion and proportion does not change. It's also maybe challenge if you inject, let's say uh, hydrogen in your, in your pipes, but I'll not be discussing that much. Uh, so now all very fast front transits are ignored. So what is fast? Fast is when you are uh, faster than speed of sound. So gas in pipes, they're under significant pressure, so much more than uh, what we have in the air, but it's another type of gas at air. And roughly the speed of sound is like what we have in the, in the, in the air. So that sets, sets up a scale. And of course, flows, actual physical flow of gas is much slower. So that's a significant assumption and uh, very rarely need to be changed. So now gas is turbulent. Uh, so when you look at how individual particle uh, or molecule of gas moves, it moves uh, stochastically uh, within a pipe, but pipe is much longer uh, in the, than, um, well, uh, you travel uh, hundreds of kilometers or miles and uh, diameter of a pipe, maybe half meter or meter. So uh, you basically walk in this uh, one line approximation. This is basics and uh, there is also mass flow, uh, which is significant characteristics, which important. And then there is density, there are veloc uh, and velocities. So everything is formulated in those terms. We are interested in the regime of slow dynamics, again, slow with respect to this fast transients. And uh, there are also like in power system consumptions and injections. Uh, and uh, all those fast transients are dumped, uh, dumped through this friction, which I mentioned before. Uh, so we'll not go into subseconds. We are probably live in minutes uh, to, to hours. 
So now a uh, very significant difference between power system and gas system is in uh, how you need to model, even though it's slow regime, it's never in balance. So in power system, uh, we uh, normally on a scale of a minute or even on a scale of a seconds, we are in balance. So whatever we inject, uh, the same amount we uh, consume. Uh, and of course, also uh, there are losses. So here you can pack, and that's what is called line pack. You can really literally inject gas and don't withdraw it all other way around. And pressure variations uh, much more significant than voltage variations in power system. So pressure may change basically uh, on the order of, uh, so you may start from 300 PSI and you can go to 800 PSI easily. So basically factor of two, uh, big difference. So now, uh, what are those models? Uh, still we study stationary, uh, stationary that's where the situation is balanced. Uh, well, uh, you see here two uh, models, as usual, you need to put it in a graph, you have nodes. Uh, uh, those graphs may be uh, tree-like without loops. Actually, majority of uh, big uh, uh, transmission levels, so again, the transmission distribution uh, reminds very much what we have in power system. Transmission level pipes are uh, loopless. Uh, in Europe, it's uh, much more interesting and involved. And equations which you see here, the gas flow equations. Think of them as full analogs of power flow. Full, but not quite. Uh, so now, uh, again, as I, um, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, you have pressure, and you have a pressure drop at two nodes which are uh, connecting uh, a line. You have a pressure drop, and pressure drop, uh, pr pressure squared drop is proportional to flow uh, so mass flow squared. So that's, that's basically major, major uh, gas flow equations. You might also have compressors. Compressors uh, are significant because without compressors, your pressure will go down and you basically will not be able to push gas. So that's uh, first you see equations without uh, compressors. You may uh, also modify them and account for compressors. Still algebraic equations, but already interesting challenging graph uh, uh, problems in the sense of the system of algebraic equations uh, is not quite uh, trivial to solve, very much like power flow equations are not trivial. Okay, so now uh, there are various, uh, so now I'm start talking about dynamics. I already made the case that uh, dynamics is significant. So pressure variations are very large. You can inject a gas and hold it in a pipe so it will fall a line pack. So you need to develop techniques for doing that. So those are three techniques we've been uh, developing. Of course, we are not first in this business, but I'm just referring to what, what I experienced. And let me maybe very briefly mention one of them and skip over others. Uh, so this was developed by Tolia Zlotnik mainly, and actually some figures will be from him. Uh, so now the difference is that it's a system of PDEs. So those PDEs, um, they're in space and time, and this is for just single pipe. So you have a density and density, uh, which uh, uh, equation for density, so derivative of density uh, is equal to uh, uh, flux of uh, overflow. So a derivative uh, of a special extent, so a, a longer pipe. So basically you have all those rows and phi's evolving uh, in space and time, even for single pipe. So now uh, there is a nonlinearity, and nonlinearity is due to uh, losses. Uh, so those losses, which I mentioned, so basically pressure works to over, overcome those losses, and um, losses are uh, nonlinear and they are quadratic uh, in uh, in the flow. Okay, so let me let me get back to my main part. So now, uh, so lab element with E is when you discretize. You discretize uh, in uh, space, you can also discretize in time, and then you end up with a system of um, uh, dynamic equations. Uh, well, if it is continuous in time, and uh, but uh, uh, with a, a, a finite grid. So you may also have various other techniques, uh, and uh, they actually uh, may be faster, but less reliable. So it's uh, all this business of model reduction is significant. If you'll get questions later on, I'll be happy to uh, tell you more about that. Uh, so all of those three are actually by now pretty well developed, at least within this Los Alamos team and other teams around the world uh, using them extensively. A lot of research uh, has, well, has happened, not only in the last five years, and of course in the last 30 years, but it's uh, certainly activated.
uh, in the last uh, maybe maybe five to ten years. Uh, so I mentioned that gas networks are often three, so that's a typical model which you start with. And advantage of this, um, well, uh, lump element method is that you can add nodes uh, even adaptively if you wish uh, as needed. Uh, and uh, so especially uh, when uh, you have a significant changes along this particular line, you put more nodes. So that's quite, quite obvious. And you see here typical parameters. So 500 kilometer uh, system, uh, so still uh, tree-like. Uh, and again, majority of pipelines in US are of that type. And uh, the discretization, uh, which probably would be important is uh, on a scale of 10 kilometers. So now, uh, well, I have movie here, but decided not to show, not to exercise uh, patience of uh, the system. Uh, so that's what, what is shown here is a typical setup. So you have withdrawals, and that's what you see uh, here on the left. Your withdrawals changes. So uh, you, so those different colors uh, corresponds to withdrawals or injections of gas at different nodes. And uh, it is prescribed in this case. So it is whatever it is, and that probably depends on customer. Customers, by the way, majority of them big new customers, uh, uh, power grid plants, gas plants. And then uh, you also have uh, compressors. Compressors, which I mentioned, they, some of them, they're on a flat regime. So you have a, a degree of compression, which is two, which is basically means that you rise pressure by a factor of two. Uh, some of them are practically not changed. So there is one which is red with at unity and others according to certain protocol. So in this case, we are not optimizing and we are running and uh, running in time and you want to study uh, how uh, pressure changes and how flux changes. And then you kind of, you may visualize it nicely. So that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty reasonable. And you study line park. You basically study how much pressure is raised. Pressure is raised when you have more gas in the pipe, how, how it goes down and uh, what are distribution of flows. Very much like in power system, much slower. And that's about real gas and not about uh, electricity. Okay, so there are effects which you may study, which are quite unusual and interesting. And some of those effects uh, actually are quite significant. Uh, and uh, that's already we start talking about uncertainty. But like in the power system, we discussed in recent, I don't know, 20, 30 years, uh, a lot of fact of uncertainty, how we model it, how we do it in robust way, uh, and if we use stochastic terms or not. So here, there are all these approaches which also applies. And um, you may consider maybe as a, a little bit academic experience, uh, well, effect, uh, academic study first, but then you'll see how it can be used in a practical setting, a single pipe, uh, which is a long, and then you have a uh, kind of continuously changing areas where you inject and consume. And uh, on the top of that, you put uh, fluctuations. So now why fluctuations and where they're coming from? Fluctuations in consumption or production, and that's coming in particular because gas plants on the power side uh, follow uh, wind turbines, as we know. So gas plants are very fast uh, to respond uh, and they, uh, they, in this sense, a significant asset for uh, power system engineers. And uh, you, uh, you basically take advantage of that, but that's immediately uh, very, uh, well, uh, wind turbines fluctuates and therefore consumption of gas fluctuates. So now you study this effect. So what, is a, what are those fluctuations? You assume that those fluctuations uh, are kind of uh, well, described uh, through uh, random random noise. So like this lunge event term in your equations formally. And then uh, you ask a question. So what happens with your pressure? What happens with your flow? And what you discover, because it's uh, uh, ODEs and also in part because they're nonlinear, you have this effect when, uh, which we call diffusive jitter. When fluctuations of pressure accumulates unless you pin pressure down, unless you have control. If you don't have control, if you let it go, it will basically start to diverge, diverge from stationary value. And that's what this slide shows. Uh, you can study this in various uh, kind of simple and synthetic fashion. And uh, this diffusion coefficients or how fast your pressure accumulates. So what does it mean a jitter? In this case, it means that fluctuations grows linearly with time. It's a little bit like diffusion in applied mass. It is actually, uh, but uh, this diffusion coefficient may be very different along your pipe at different places of your system. And uh, practicality wise, you can apply it to uh, systems like um, system on East Coast. 
And uh, here uh, is actually also an opportunity for me to mention that, of course, fracking, which we probably forgot already in the last few years, how um, um, uh, well uh, controversial it was. So Marcelo Sell Shells in Pennsylvania, that is a new fracking area, and that introduced, uh, so it's actually somewhere, somewhere in here, uh, actually, this little little piece is is exactly Marcelo shell. So it's a new element for gas system operators, and that introduced a lot of a, a new injection. And this injection goes to New York City, and of course, traditionally from east from from Gulf of Mexico, there is also flowing here. And then uh, there is an interesting point somewhere in New Jersey, and that's this uh, post one seven seven one, when basically a flow reverses. And what you discover, you discover that this pressure uh, fluctuations analysis. So pressure fluctuations, jitter of pressure becomes more significant at the place of flow reversal. And that's uh, actually practicality of this uh, kind of uh, academic uh, applied mass type of study. You can uh, check uh, for uh, pressure fluctuations of point of reversal and be sure uh, to uh, pin this pressure down at this point, control it. Uh, much more seriously than other other points, and that's I guess main main points in in here on this slide, which I already uh, told you about. Okay, so I am um, I still have uh, 20 plus minutes, 24, 23 I guess. So now uh, I'm getting in a little bit uh, different subject. Uh, even though it is still along the lines of dynamics, it is still along the line of uh, line park. And it's also about uncertainty, but now uh, uncertainty will be treated not uh, through stochastic term, but uh, in fact attempting to, uh, well, uh, to bound uh, this uncertainty interval and uh, let's see how we can uh, do that. Uh, so now, uh, uh, well, uh, motivation is basically stay the same. So gas generators, uh, main responders, uh, city gates, I already mentioned them, primary customers, especially if it is a cold weather. Uh, and both of them subject to failures and uh, changes. And uh, uh, well, uh, some of compressors are under control, but not all of them. So it's a big system and very much in the power, like in a power system, not everything is immediately accessible to system operator. So how to deal with this uncertainty? All of that, uh, how can you uh, put it in optimization and control and still uh, be within boundaries? Uh, and uh, well, remember it's a difficult problem, right? It's a system of PD over graph. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, well, here you see equation for just one line, but uh, there are many lines and uh, sometimes there are loops as, as you heard uh, from me already. So now uh, recapping. So this is, there is this uh, terminology. So nodal production consumption. So this Q of T. There is flow through a pipeline, which is phi. Uh, there is a density of gas rho. And we might either discuss it in a steady regime, which is in here. And then it's algebraic nonlinear equations, or more generally, it's a system of nonlinear partial differential equations. Quite a mess. So now. Um, However, this mass has a structure which is actually missed uh, in a power system. And the structure is what, what I'll be taking advantage of. So this, uh, it is a compressible, compressible flow. And uh, well, uh, there is also this terminology which you can use from gas dynamics. Dynamics, it's a potential and it is dissipative. Uh, so uh, there is a special property of this uh, steady state equations. And I'll, I'll give you some physical meaning uh, to this property uh, in the next slide. Uh, it's actually applied, applies not only in the gas system, it probably applies to much broader set of flows, but not to power flow in general. In general. And uh, so to explain it, so there is this property, which is basically monotonicity. Uh, so how to, to understand it? Uh, so imagine that uh, you have a steady state, let me start from that, but then uh, in a steady state equation, like in a power system, you have this injection consumption, a so different node. And uh, imagine that there is a slow bound on how you can inject an upper bound and similar on, uh, on the consumptions, but they're ordered. So you uh, have a kind of, uh, well, uh, you have interval for all of your injection consumptions. And there is this remarkable theory, which uh, uh, Mark Wufre, uh, one of co-authors of on this study, uh, well, um, coin Aquarius theory. 
so basically, uh, order, so uh, those equations are equations for flows and for densities. And uh, what is injection consumptions is input flows and density of a system uh, is output. So basically, if your injection consumptions are ordered, solutions are also ordered. So you're basically in between those two extremes. If you solve uh, blue and you solve for red and you are sure that your black, your reality is in between, then you have a good estimate, you have good bounds. That's quite unusual, but uh, I mean, for power system, it's certainly not the case, but on a gas system, that's a remarkable property. It extends to dynamics. Uh, it's not only static property. So that's basically now depicted and shown for dynamic case. So again, the same thing at every moment of time, if you have blue, which is low bound and red, which is uh, upper bound, you're within, within, within those bounds in reality, which is black. And um, that's a tremendous reduction in complexity in, in analysis. Of course, if you have a kind of reliable way and relatively tight uh, low and upper bounds. So basically you go from infinity uh, to two, uh, two which is up and low bound. So that's illustrated in here an example of uh, uh, this um, um, pipeline on this cost of years. So imagine that you have number of scenarios and then you manage to uh, bound those scenarios by blue and by, by green. So basically those two which you only need to have, you don't need to exercise all those many scenarios. So you go from infinitely many through this aquarium theory to only two, big deal. Uh, so now uh, let me um, um, change gears again and uh, go to uh, optimization control. So we studied uh, dynamics, uh, we studied uh, gas flow system. So it's like power flow system, gas flow system. And now I'm going to optimum gas flow, like uh, analog of OPF, but of course it's still dynamic. And um, well, before doing dynamics, we still want, we want to do static. Relevance of static, even though I was arguing about, um, uh, about uh, line park, uh, for planning, you can still do uh, static analysis. And if planning is about maybe days ahead, maybe uh, hours ahead. Well, in fact, uh, many gas operators, they want their system back to the same state every morning. So basically 24 hours is a natural period. So if you are at a scales longer than 24 hours, you are pretty safe. Uh, that's a starting point in any case to study static optimum gas flow. And this is how it looks. So now uh, difference is that instead of optimizing like an opti OPF, optimum power flow, we optimize, we minimize the cost of generation. So here you minimize the cost of compression. There are different formulations. So this is a particular formulation, which is of interest. And here uh, in this paper, which is led, was led by Sithan a number of years ago, um, we basically discovered that in a case of a trees, and again, in US, it's pretty much a standard. You can solve, you can not only pose, it, it's generally nonlinear and difficult optimization problem, but through some tricks, which are geometric programming, basically nonlinear change of nonlinear variables, uh, you might solve your problem. So what is the problem? Maybe a few things uh, to, about the problem formulation. So it's a cost of compression. So then uh, there are these gas flows, very much like power flows, and uh, there is a range for pressures you also uh, need to have, uh, well, may have a uh, bounce on, uh, on, uh, on a degree of compression. Okay, so far so good, but how about dynamics? Uh, dynamics will come next, but um, uh, well, uh, before dynamics, I just want to mention that uh, we are not new with the ge geometric programming is our invention, but uh, believe it or not, one of the first, uh, first uh, applications in practical engineering of dynamic programming was in a gas system. And in fact, you can do uh, for tree-like uh, problems, uh, dynamic programming. Well, uh, there is a caveat here. Uh, the catch is that this dynamic programming, uh, uh, it's infinite dimensional dynamic programming. So basically, uh, yes, you can uh, have a greedy uh, approach, but uh, every at every uh, degree of every degree of freedom is an integration, and you have uh, these continuous uh, integrations to make. So, uh, but in any case, you may compare the geometric programming with dynamic programming, and uh, as probably very familiar in any practical engineering, uh, greedy compression, uh, which is more or less what, uh, what is the current practice in practically all gas system operators. So there are predefined uh, compression rules 
uh, is quite uh, drastically different from what you see uh, in the optim op at optimality and what you see in reality. So there is a lot of a lot of uh, kind of room to go. So what is shown in here is, is this um, our um, uh, well, this East Coast pipeline, and there is a mile uh, post, so it's basically positioned along this pipeline as a function of pressure. And those kind of jumps is uh, basically where compressor stations are. And you see the dynamic program, geometric programming are quite the same. And uh, okay, so how about dynamics, line park? Uh, well, uh, in this approach, which I was mentioning you before, when you discretize lab, a lump element, you can certainly extend it to this case. Uh, so it's a basically a kind of optimal control type of problem. And uh, so you, uh, your degree of freedom is compression and uh, you, you basically uh, may, uh, you may assume that you know um, consumption, injection and consumptions and then you, you're looking for compression and your solution is in terms of uh, uh, pressure is a function of time and flux is a function of time. Okay, so now um, in the remaining uh, 13 minutes or so, um, I'll be uh, telling you very briefly too about gas grid coordination. And um, so that's a very uh, kind of timely and important subject. So that's a work which we've been doing um, uh, at Los Alamos already now by four years ago. And it was led mainly by um, uh, Lina Rolt and um, uh, Anat. Um, Anatoly Zlotnik. And uh, so our objective here was uh, to uh, um, try to link and try to connect those two systems, gas and power, and uh, do it in a quantitative way. So we have optimum power flow and we have, uh, which is static. And we also have an optimum gas flow, which may be static or dynamic. And then uh, we can consider those two systems acting completely independently. And actually my motivation, I remember I was mentioning this uh, East Coast um, uh, polar vortex effect. Uh, of course, actions of uh, operators on the power side was not really, were not really coordinated with the gas system operator. So that was motivation for us to see how much you can gain. There are different regimes. And here I wanted to emphasize maybe two extremes. So one is, uh, basically business as usual, it's uh, regime number one. When you uh, have a, a static gas network and, uh, well, static static optimization on gas uh, part and uh, static optimization on, um, on electric part, it will always be static because we are talking about basically 24 hours range and uh, they don't talk to each other. And another extreme when you do it in, in a combined way. And let's see what, what you'll get. You'll get actually uh, quite a kind of different type of solution as you can guess, but first maybe a little bit about setting, which is of course, uh, well, in this case, we, we set it up as a kind of synthetic fashion. So you have a relatively small uh, power system uh, on the left. Uh, and uh, then you have a, a also a relatively small uh, gas system, small, but quite realistic on the transmission level modeling. So now uh, there are uh, green dots and green dots uh, are city gates. So local distribution companies. So purple dots, uh, those are point of connections. Uh, so you have a gas units uh, and their uh, producers on the power side and their consumers on the gas side. And that's where link is coming uh, to. So now, um, so there is a power demand uh, and uh, so we put uh, standard power demand and put PV, so try to be realistic. And now what did we study? Uh, well, uh, we studied uh, uh, how uh, gas generation fuel changes with time. We studied, we check at the compression, so that was actually our degree of freedom. So we can do it absolutely flat way, and that's in regime one, or we can do it in a creative way, and that of course creativity will be uh, output of our optimization problem. And then, uh, so it will be gas generator fuel usage again, uh, in this case, pressure. So you look at the pressure. So if you follow this uh, standard practice, which is what, uh, what it is, it's uh, you do OPF, you solve it, and then you add uh, 15 uh, of a margin to solutions, and then you, you solve on the top of that uh, static OJF, so completely independently. Then you run into troubles uh, on the pressure side. 
So you're completely correct for those troubles if you do joint optimization. So again, on a high level, that's what, uh, uh, what is advantage of core uh, optimization. Uh, it's doable, it's uh, hopefully will be practical one day soon. And yeah, so there is more information about that. So let me, let me skip uh, this part. And uh, so uh, now I'm coming into this kind of uh, slow conclusion for my, uh, for my tutorial. So take home message, and that's uh, for now about uh, natural gas systems. Uh, so there are quite a number of practical algorithms, uh, which you develop first as academic uh, version, and then uh, try to attempt it to turn it into practicals, but practical. Uh, so there are different approaches, different tools, and uh, they uh, kind of aim at different uh, capabilities and problems. So what are problems? So first of all, line pack. Uh, so you need to uh, model and simulate. So that's basically dynamics. Uh, dynamics is absolutely not avoidable in a gas system and you need to deal with that. Uh, you also need to deal with uncertainty and uncertainty, uh, our current solution, the best solution we have is this um, monotonicity, which is a remarkable property. Uh, by the way, we attempted to extend it to power system. It may extend to some regimes, but uh, only limited uh, degree. Uh, in gas systems is quite general. And then uh, we can extend it to dynamic optimization and control, and that's of course your ultimate goal. Well, in fact, uh, probably even a more important task, which we didn't touch yet, is planning, and that's uh, as in a power system, even more challenging ahead of us. Uh, gas grid interactions. Uh, so that's uh, where uh, impact will, of these studies will probably be most significant. Uh, we uh, already had situations when, uh, emergent situation when this was uh, critical uh, and uh, hopefully uh, soon uh, and um, in many systems it will be co-optimized. So now um, what is next? Uh, so basically along those lines, uh, so there is quite a lot of lines of this presentation, quite a lot of things which you can do on modeling and controlling uncertainty side. Uh, and um, you probably most important thing for me uh, would be uh, do it not only for gas system, not only for power system, and not only for district heating system, but all of that in combination. Uh, so of course we want to work with the specific networks, so real models are quite different, but uh, kind of there are similarities, but without working with actual practical data, uh, it's quite, uh, well, uh, you want to be useful. Um, uh, so now, uh, model reduction. Uh, when you run into trouble of uh, having too many degrees of freedom, you need to reduce your model. And uh, so model reduction becomes quite significant. So I didn't emphasize uh, the different uh, schemes which develop in particular this adiabatic method. Well, I mentioned it on a slide, but didn't talk about that. So that's certainly important uh, further development, which, uh, well, uh, it requires further development, but that's already quite good uh, as we have it. And there are various other tools from uh, statistics, uh, probability, and that's uh, in relation to uncertainty, of course, optimization control. I mentioned in the beginning about separation of time. I uh, was telling you that uh, shocks or fast transients are not important. They're important in the case of emergencies. And natural gas very much like in power systems, there are emergencies. And those emergencies are quite uh, devastating, not only locally because, well, if gas pipe explodes, people may die, but it's also uh, damage uh, equipment and uh, because there's a shock which propagates through the system. So you may want uh, to study that uh, and um, it actually becomes, uh, it, it then scales of power system and gas systems, if you're talking about those affecting each other, more or less comparable. So it goes along these lines of core study of electromechanical waves and shock waves in, in the power system and shock waves in the gas system. So now, uh, uh, well, uh, so there are different, uh, different other skills, different other kind of approaches and uh, questions uh, which we need to pose. So I, I don't have much time to, to dwell on that. Uh, but by and large, uh, in my world, uh, I would say that most interesting thing is happening on the distribution level. It probably would apply to power system as well. And that's a level ultimately, which we know least about. And that's where uh, those systems are really in a, uh, coupled in a much, much stronger way. 
So now, uh, summary, but maybe in a little bit higher level. Uh, so what did we study, what we discuss uh, in general today, uh, energy systems? Uh, well, I, I'm selling uh, that uh, uh, future focus on a district level is important. Uh, so those uh, three components uh, working together. So now uh, when you start doing research in this area, uh, don't try to adapt uh, schemes which you know from power system, just uh, try to study physical network flows, which are quite different. Then of course, look for similarities. So static, uh, dynamic, uh, uncertainty. Uh, well, statistics uh, is quite important. I didn't emphasize it much, optimization and control too. Uh, in fact, uh, in terms of statistics, we have a, a, a session, actually round table, which will follow my, uh, well, these uh, tutorials and uh, please stay tuned, there'll be interesting discussion about machine learning in power system, maybe energy systems will be touched too. So now uh, I'm using last three minutes I have for two minutes. Uh, um, is, I mean, end up with some advertisement. So some of you probably already heard about uh, Los Alamos Grid Sign Winter School and Conference. Uh, so it's biennial and uh, we are planning next one and tentative days uh, in January. So of course it's subject to COVID ruling. Uh, so energy systems will actually be in the focus and those are folks who, who are behind that and that's already first time we are running that. I also wanted to put a little advertisement. Um, stay tuned and check in September. Uh, IEEE, proceedings of IEEE special issue, which I'm co-editing with um, Joran Anderson. And uh, so, yeah, so you can, you can see uh, different contributions and uh, they're covering energy systems from different corners. And uh, I also have quite a number of reading suggestions. Of course, I was not able to cover in those 40 plus minutes everything. Uh, and uh, so I have it uh, kind of uh, for those who are on the mass and physics side. Maybe I can uh, emphasize here that there is significant work coming from Russia, uh, from Sukharev and his group, from Poland, from um, uh, IC Edits. Uh, and uh, those are two, two fellows who've been in this business in the gas system modeling, uh, optimization and control for probably 50 years at least. Uh, and then there are more recent papers in particular from our groups, but also other groups. Uh, so there are also optimum gas flows. Uh, there are some papers on design, even though uh, much fewer. Uh, so optimal control of gas flow. Now we are getting into dynamics again, uh, not only our papers, but uh, we contributed and others to the subject too. Uh, and gas creek optimization, so that's a, that's a paper I was uh, very briefly mentioning, and uh, there is, uh, as usual, some prehistory too. And with that, uh, thank you very much. I think I'm on time. Thank you. Thank you, Misha. Uh, absolutely perfect, perfect timing, uh, actually. Uh, so uh, I would uh, I would welcome some some questions from from the audience. I think people have been a bit shy uh, in the last uh, couple of hours, let's say, probably after lunch. I think it's slow. Uh, is, there, is there any question or is it free, free to type? I can come in with, come in with a question, Pierluigi, if- uh, Please, 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 please. gets us all warmed up again. Um, Amisha, thanks ever so much. Um, I think you mentioned right at the beginning of your talk something about um, gas-fired generation is quite flexible, you know, it can ramp up and down, but uh, it seems to me that when we get more and more weather-dependent renewable generation on the electricity system, there's going to be more and more requirement for gas plant, the remaining gas plant, to uh, ramp up and down more often and maybe more quickly. So I mean, do you think that presents particular challenges then for the, the gas the gas network and the gas system? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> proper question. Um, um, it, uh, of course, you're absolutely right. So your question assumes, uh, I guess, no yes or no answer. Of course, it, it will be significant uh, to change fast. So gas system um, is um, advantageous in terms of interaction with power system exactly for this reason. So many generators and new generators 
uh, actually both uh, large but especially small generators distributed generation is very fast in terms of response so it's not a problem to change uh, in principle uh, on the scale of a minute for sure but maybe on the scale of seconds of course it creates troubles of course uh, it creates challenges uh, so gas system operators are not um, uh, in a so dynamic of a mode, at least not in the past, in part because uh, there are not that significant uh, pressure constraints are much more uh, relieved uh, than uh, voltage constraints. And uh, so they, they have a lot of leg room in the past and now it gets uh, basically um, less and less so. Um, well, maybe I, I should reiterate again. So traditionally uh, consumers for gas system operators were uh, city gates. In city gates, uh, it's a lot of small consumers, uh, very predictable. Uh, so low of large numbers works pretty well. So you predict it perfectly well. And, uh, uh, and you also have a lot of leg room. So you have always reserves. Uh, so now imagine you have those basically as much of a consumption in the gas uh, system site now coming is a new, new in the sense of last 20 years. And uh, it, it follows wind, it fluctuates quite wildly. Uh, so leg room saved gas system operators from troubles. Actually, those troubles I mentioned before, they are mainly on the power system side, right? So power systems, uh, they basically, in US at least, uh, power system operators, uh, they were assuming that their contract uh, are solid, but uh, they actually were not, uh, because for gas system, a prime customer is still city gate. So now it will all change. Uh, so changes are slow, as you can guess, uh, especially in the US, actually, because uh, those two, uh, two worlds are really not, not coupled. So whenever um, uh, this leg room will not be sufficient, the gas system operator starts to be as uh, anxious and as uh, kind of um, you know, demanding uh, as power system operator then uh, when uh, all this analysis, which we in particular contribute, uh, probably will start to be uh, much more practical. Yeah, thanks. And it uh, looks like we've had a question on, on the Q&A, Pierluigi, which I guess is sort of related to that, that what we've just been discussing. There is, there is a question exactly. Uh, so the, uh, just, just to summarize, Misha JJ, you, you, you got, uh, you, you, you made uh, uh, the presentation pretty much around uh, sort of la large system, large scale uh, integrated systems. But uh, let's imagine that we would uh, work uh, at the level of, of a district, uh, including sort of low pressure networks uh, that may be associated with uh, the equivalent to low voltage networks in the uh, mm -hmm. districts and all that. What kind of modeling would you, would you suggest at the point of what would be the main difference in terms of modeling? Um, yeah, no, it's a great question. And I put here uh, this uh, special uh, issue uh, to basically attract your attention. Okay, so where is that? Uh, so we have once, uh, boo, boo, boo. Uh, no, I, by some reason I don't see it in here. So I see Yelitz uh, has a, uh, basically one of very few people who studied uh, gas system on the distribution level. It's understudied. Understudied because again, uh, gas system operators, they were uh, kind of rich in fat if you wish. So, uh, so uh, gas system was uh, on a distribution level was more or less abandoned because because it was predictable, not much of uncertainty and not, not, not much of a trouble, not much of a control. So you basically uh, have a, uh, transformers, uh, gas transformers, you, uh, you have much lower pressure, uh, obviously in a gas pipe. And then, I mean, uh, you, you basically follow whatever happens and what happens is very predictable. In terms of equations, they're pretty much the same. Of course, parameters uh, needs to be changed. Equations are the same. You have all the same effects. You also have line pack, but of course it's much less because your pipes are, well, you literally have much less gas in on the distribution level. But having said so, your point is well, very well taken. Uh, so there are quite a lot of uh, new challenges uh, and new challenges uh, will require and uh, already uh, kind of call for, for, for new solutions. And I believe, so not much of studies, uh, so check uh, most recent papers of a series. Uh, I actually cannot recommend probably anybody else yet. 
and, and that's if you are asking about actual equations and accounting for physical effects. Of course, on the level of uh, energy hub, uh, there are quite a lot of ideas and quite a lot of discussions, in particular from our chairman. Uh, but uh, there are interesting and unusual uh, dynamical and uh, physical phenomena which 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 needs to be to be studied certainly. Uh, yeah, I also probably should mention that uh, I emphasize this distribution level uh, coordination, right, uh, between gas and uh, heat and electricity. Uh, there are very unusual and very interesting couplings. Uh, well, those degrees of freedom, those are energy systems, right? They are replaceable. So you can get uh, energy from gas, you can get energy from electricity or from heat. And this is also creates on the consumer level, a lot of interesting inter interactions, a lot of interesting modeling too. Yeah, so okay. CADIS has a paper which contributed to the special issue, but by some reason I didn't put it. So check, check his paper on that. Oh, thanks. I'm, I'm sure people will definitely check the whole special issue. Um, absolutely. Uh, I would like to ask you another another question about uh, about hydrogen. Uh, a little bit, uh, you know, your 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 view on hydrogen, particularly injection of hydrogen into gas network, and how you see sort of the physics of the gas network being affected, uh, and then your sort of perspective uh, in in that direction. Uh, well, I'm not expert. I can only give you educated guess of somebody who is uh, well who is educated in gas dynamics. So gas dynamics equations, well, it's quite easy, I mean, and straightforward how to account for that. So it will be uh, basically, um, well, the relation between pressure and density will change, right? Uh, and you control it. So it's basically not ideal gas or not, uh, well, it's another type of gas. And then you, you can account for that. So now, uh, in I also should say that uh, in US and, um, Quite a lot of my studies were motivated by studies in uh, by, by basically practical problems in US. It's not an issue, so nobody is discussing that in Europe. I know that it was under discussion and quite quite a long while. So there is a prehistory of that. Uh, so now, um, uh, uh, yeah. So it's a, it's another degree of freedom. It's a degree of freedom which probably will uh, will be quite useful. Uh, any degree of freedom is useful if you know how to use it and uh, you compare costs. Uh, so beyond that, uh, I guess, Pierre Luigi, you, you probably have a better answer to all of that because I know that you are practically interested in that. It's not what, what is in my immediate focus. No, th th thanks, Michel. No, I just I just wanted to hear if you if you had if you had any view. Is it clear to you why in the US uh, it is not of, of high interest because this is such a very important topic uh, in, in Europe, uh, in, in the UK, Australia as well, uh, China. Uh, do, do, do you have a feeling as to why this doesn't seem to be attractive in the US? Well, um, well I guess um, it's mainly economics. Uh, so this, uh, uh, well, um, there is a lot of gas in the US <laughs> and especially, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, there is basically much less of a pressure. Uh, on, 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 on that side. And uh, there are also kind of long pipes and um, quite, quite a, I mean, enough of reservoirs. So it's, it's, it's just, uh, there are many other, uh, uh, well, um, options uh, available uh, in the US and in Europe uh, for kind of mitigating possible troubles. Uh, so that's, that's probably major explanations which I would have, but uh, well, as in many other subjects, it doesn't mean that it will stay this way. So hopefully it will change. Uh, well, you may ask the same question about uh, district heating, right? So why US is not doing practically any district heating in comparison with other countries. Uh, economics is different, uh, but hopefully it will change. It depends yeah. on uh, having a, you know, the economics to take proper account of carbon emissions. Um, that's right. So if you start uh, putting, uh, well, if you formulate a proper optimization problem and you have uh, cost and cost in particular of carbon emissions, that may change significantly. Uh, well, uh, actually for district heating, it's quite a difficult argument. Uh, it, all of that is controversial and uh, yeah, so it depends on how you price all of that. See, there's a there's another another question on on the the Q and A. 
um, to do with well, gas storage. I mean, it's mentioning the possibility of power to gas and, and hydrogen injection. Uh, I don't know if you can, you can maybe see the question yourself. Is there a, a clear need for gas storage to be maintained or even expanded? Uh, I mean, I think yeah. actually you could even ask that question on the here and now. Um, I know that in the UK, we've sometimes had some worries about a uh, particularly cold spell of weather and and the, the gas that's kind of inherently stored in the in the transmission network being used up and then you know you're kind of maybe sensitive to what the inflows are a lot of discussion right. about how we don't have enough gas storage to deal with these kind of very cold spells of weather uh, no absolutely yeah so that's uh, storage um, is less significant than the power system right uh, so uh, well because line pack allows you to kind of uh, delay but um, uh, so time the question is what is the time scale of this storage so there are traditional storages which, which are basically you store is a uh, old mines uh, but normally it goes only one way it's basically seasonal uh, so you you inject um, gas it stays at low pressure and then uh, actually extracting it uh, takes a lot of work uh, literally physical work and money uh, so you cannot kind of uh, kind of jack it back and forth uh, but now uh, compressed gas uh, is a perfect and very nice solution, more expensive though. And actually compressed gas, uh, again, coming from US perspective, changed quite a lot uh, in, uh, in how, how gas uh, kind of distributed in the US. There is quite a lot of uh, small, compact and very efficient gas uh, com compressed storages uh, uh, along the East Coast. And uh, that's, uh, that adds to, to flexibility. So you can uh, much easy, uh, easily uh, uh, yeah, resolve your troubles uh, if, you have, uh, if you have this reserve. Uh, and uh, that extends your line, line park uh, options uh, quite significantly. Uh, so how, to, to, how much it is, it is all local and you need to, to do estimations and that's where this uh, joint optimization studies and planning uh, becoming extremely significant. Yeah, and then just on that, the joint optimization studies, um, do, the relative, do, the, do the respective network owners and system operators really have the scope to make use of those joint studies? Uh, you know, because it, it could lead to money being spent in one place and not another, another place, which I don't know, it might be difficult to be funded or, or uh, there might be some yeah. reason, you know, why you know, one yeah, party no, doesn't like uh, another party doing something. Uh, well, I, I keep asking this question and <laughs> it is different uh, in, in different countries. I know that in Germany is actually quite a lot of those studies. Uh, practical because, um, well, because the same company owns gas and uh, electric system. And even though those are different departments, they're still not too far from each other. Uh, so in the US, those are not only different uh, departments, but different companies with very different regulations. And uh, so there was quite significant push from power system after this uh, cold events for power system operators, not enough of a push from gas systems, but, uh, and, and they're still uh, kind of regulated and they're not, it's not, it's not really, no, there is no, again, business uh, drive for that. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm also familiar with the kind of situation in Russia and it's even kind of worse than in the US in the sense that uh, those two are not talking to each other and there is very little uh, coordination even though you're absolutely right, so you can save tons of money. Uh, so it's basically government, it's a government level regulation which probably can resolve it and uh, we'll see who will be first in doing that. I see that Mats has a question about uh, uh, validated with industry data systems. Uh, so Mats, you probably know uh, uh, Tolly Zlotnik. Anatoly Zlotnik. Anatoly actually was working very uh, extensively with, uh, with a part of RPE project in US uh, with a number of gas operators. You probably should ask uh, him uh, this question. Uh, there are challenges and uh, challenges in terms of data sharing. Uh, actually, all of those models which you saw in my presentation, we more or less constructed them ourselves. So those are, uh, well, quasi-realistic models, let's put it that, that way, from data which is available at open. Uh, 
uh, yeah, so the same, the same troubles and the same question as we have in power system all over again. Okay, I think, uh, I think if there is no other question, maybe uh, my suggestion would be just to have a couple of minutes of, of uh, break.